Welcome back, everybody. This is your three-man booth. I'm Dan Salem. We got Phil and Bud's back from his vacation in Disneyland. Welcome well, back, guys. NFL never sleeps. It's been an exciting week since we last spoke. <laughs> it's incredible. This this is a literally a 12-month-a-year sport. The Super Bowl ends, and there's more news now than there was two weeks ago. It's incredible. It makes you wonder if the league kind of like says, okay, wait until tomorrow to drop this, and then – you wait until next week to drop this so that it never stops. I don't, I don't know. But uh, well, apparently, the big news today was Antonio Brown and uh, uh, what is it, Rooney? Yep. Uh, met today, and uh, I guess they both decided that they're gonna they're gonna trade him. Well, and then they posed for a picture holding, uh, you know, shaking each other's hands. Well, so, so we knew that he was gonna get traded, right? But they dragged that story out for like three weeks. I'm glad and. When they announced that they were going to meet last, at the end of last week, you know Steeler fans were like, oh, yeah, he's coming back. <laughs> but no. I'd, I'd really be interested to hear what was in that meeting. I don't know if we'll ever find out, but, they, uh, again, they, they pose for a picture. They're both smiling, shaking hands. and like, well, we, mu- we mutually you know, decided it's, good, it's a good, part, yeah. good to part ways. So they cleared the air. What does that mean? I, I'm, well, I'd be interested. I don't know if we'll ever know. Well, the Steelers are going to get a lot for him in a trade, and he wants to guarantee their contract. So. I don't think they're going to get as much as you think. I mean, well, he's a he's a thirty. What is he? Thirty? Thirty-one? He'll yeah, be thirty this year, I think. He's in his All prime. Right, he's so, got another five years left. I mean, right? But he makes a ton of money. He comes with a ton of baggage, and and he's going to want an extension. And he's going to want you're right. And he's going to want an extension. Nobody's going to give up a first or second round pick for him, considering that they're going to have to throw another eighteen million dollars a year at him. I mean, yeah. at best, they're going to get maybe a three or a four, maybe yeah. multiple three. I, I, we talked last week how we thought Amari Cooper set the bar with the number with a with a first round pick, but I do agree that the Steelers have zero leverage. So, I mean, he's got to get traded. Someone's got to give him something. I, I think it's going to be more like a second round pick. Well, it has maybe. to be between now and March twelfth because he's he's due a I, I forget the number a, a roster bonus. By March 12th. And I don't think he can get traded. And for some reason, all these other things are getting announced. He can't officially be traded until the new league year begins. So there's actually like a four-day period. I don't even know if they can talk to the Steelers for then. When, when does the new, when does the new uh, March league start? March 8th, I think. No, well, it's, it's, it's like the 12th or the 13th. or oh, four. I, I heard it. It's oh, in sorry, the 12th or 13th. Yeah. So then there's, there's about a week period where he can actually be traded. But I don't know if they could agree to something before. Beforehand, like these other teams are agreeing to trade, they're not actually official. But right, well, Joe Flacco got traded last week. I know that I wasn't on the show last week, but yeah, he got he got a handshake deal to go to Denver. So you got to assume that that means the end of Casey Keenum. Well, does it? I gotta the see the Broncos gotta be smart and keep both of those guys because they're like the same player, and I don't trust either of them. I, well, they signed they signed Keenum to pretty well a pretty big deal, right? I mean, how much was his like seven seventy million maybe? Was yeah, it that it, much? He's definitely going to be an expensive backup for another season or two, but right. Uh, you have that one good year and you get paid for it. It happened. It happened to him when Keenum was in Minnesota. He got he got that one great year, almost went to the to the Super Bowl, and and he got paid for it. Yeah. Well, I th- I mean, I don't think. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I think the Broncos just sucked. Like, they don't have a good offensive line. They don't have playmakers. So, I, I mean, what they got the one guy, Lindsey, who's decent. But – And they, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot of people were, were defending Flacco, and everyone's like, oh, he can't throw the ball anymore. He's not making long passes. And I forget the name of the – oh, Harbaugh, duh, of course. I know the yeah. name of the coach. <laughs> Saying that he runs more of a West Coast offense, which, and that doesn't pertain to throwing the ball downfield. So, it's like they were masking his strengths. but. Can he even throw the ball that far anymore? I, I, I don't even know. I mean, obviously he's getting up there in age. I mean, I feel like he can't be worse than Keenum was last year. He can't be worse than Eli Manning was last year. I think he'll be competent. But I don't think Denver's very good. So I don't, maybe this is just a single-season bridge. I don't even know why you bring him in if you're going to wait another year to draft your quarterback next in 2020. I, I don't get it. Yeah, that was that was that was a that was a questionable move. But to Bud's point, I mean, you're right. Joe Flacco got traded last week, so I guess you can trade. Well, it's not official until the league. It's not official until the league. Yes. Oh well, yeah, started. yeah. It's more like a handshake deal. Yeah, but but so so he can get moved, but he can't leave until right until that that first day. Maybe they can agree on a Brown trade in principle because 
It, ha it would have to be. Yeah. I think that's, I mean, I, yeah. I think the Jets released their center. I think the Bills signed him, but I don't think he officially signs until the league year starts. I think. The I Bills signed long? Oh, yeah. They snatched him up within a day. It was a, like, I was laughing. I couldn't believe that. They did not let him sit out there for more than 24 hours. It was because. <laughs> well, he was wasn't very good. I mean, he played better as a guard. I would have thought they would have kept him as a guard. I mean, they might. Maybe they'll move him. But I just – they I couldn't – maybe there's just not a lot of offensive linemen hitting free agency, but I just couldn't believe that they got him so fast. So now the question is, we, we know he's going to be traded. Now the question is going to be where? Because we sat here last week and tried to speculate without a lot of information. We thought – you know, we saw that Instagram picture of him with the Niners uniform on. I, I, don't, I still have no closer this week to knowing where he might even land up. I still think it's going to be the NFC somewhere. I, we know he's not being traded to the Patriots. I sent you guys that link that said he wow. will not be traded to the Patriots. <laughs> so the Jets don't have any second-round picks, which makes it tough for them to deal. Because I, don't, I do think a first-rounder is too steep. Is there anybody with two first-round picks? I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. But, but let, me, let, me throw, let me throw something out at you guys. And I did this um, – scenario to my brother the other day okay the Jets trade their number three pick to the giants for their number one pick this year and their number one pick next year the why are we Jets giving you two number ones you gotta give you gotta move ones up straight up. all right how, all right. Many, how much um, did the jets give up last year to move up one space they, they gave up their they second round their, pick. they gave up no, their they number two their, they gave up three third, twos yeah their first and then three twos yeah. To move up, to move up. So the Jets get their number one pick this year, which so they would move from three to six. Yeah. And then you get their number one pick next year. Then the Jets take that number one pick for next year and they flip it and they give it to Pittsburgh for Antonio Brown. See, I like that because that, gi that Giants pick likely is around 15 16 and it's next year and it's a double up i mean that's a 30 th dan 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 31 oh okay all right so so it's 31 um, <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you know, I, I would trade an extra number one for brown because i do think he's got two to five years of really top football left in him if if, if amari cooper went for a one and tony brown has to go for easily at least a one and something else has to that's the market value now except like bud said he oh he's He's going to want an extra extension. He's already under a big contract. You're right, but the Jets have the money to do that. But and Pittsburgh has zero leverage because they can't bring him back to camp. They can't keep him on the roster after March 12th. Like, they don't have any leverage. So, yeah, it's a bidding war, but it's almost like a lowball bidding war. But do you, but do you think that that is a – because there's a, there's a good possibility that somebody's going to trade up to get one of these quarterbacks and the giants need a quarterback. So if they're, if they're hell bent and sold on this quarterback out of Ohio state, you got to make, you got to make a move because you got Oakland and you got um, Phoenix, not Phoenix, you know, Arizona, Arizona. Yeah. Uh, with one and two. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I agree with you because I mean, Mel Kuyper's like pushing four quarterbacks. I don't think that there are four great quarterbacks in this draft. I think there's probably one. So yeah. knows, but we don't know which one it is. So if you have your heart set on one of them, you got to go get go get them. But right. but watch the Giants. But the Giants got to be careful because if they trade up to three, Arizona and Oakland are both shopping their one and two picks. So do you think they are though? That there's some really really sought after defensive players this year. Yeah, and, but that's why I say if the if the Jets need defensive defensive end help, so if they move to six, one of those those top defensive ends are still going to be on the board because. The Giants move up; they're going to go quarterback. I mean, it's it's that simple. I one, and two, one and two don't need quarterbacks, right? Unless you believe the hype that Arizona is going to go with Kyler Murray. I, I see. I'm, I'm, I more believe that um, Oakland would grab a quarterback to sit on the bench for two years behind Derek Carr. Because I don't know if Derek Carr's got longevity in him. All right. So, all right. So here's here it is. It, number one's the Cardinals. We we know they don't need a quarterback. Number two, San Francisco. They obviously don't need a quarterback. Number three is the Jets. They don't need a quarterback. Dan saying the Oakland Raiders could, you know, depending on what car is. And then you got Tampa Bay, who they have two, technically, with well, Fitzpatrick and, 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 uh, and Jameis and the, Winston. The GM just said that we have to back Jameis Winston, even though he stinks. So Okay. So, sorry. so then you're looking at one team that 
potentially needs a quarterback, all the rest are probably going to go defense. Look, number one, Ohio State, Nick Bosa, Josh Allen for the Niners, uh, defensive end for the Jets, defensive tackle for the Raiders, uh, defensive tackle for Tampa Bay. That's your top five. It's, it's defense all across the board. I know, I know a lot of but players are going to – Sorry, Dan. I was saying, I know a lot of players are going to re-sign with their current teams, but there are a lot of really good defensive linemen and defenders on free agency this year. So I don't think you pass up grabbing two ones for your one one. I, I mean, no, that's I, the deal. I'm, just, I'm looking at the potential top five uh, teams yeah. that are picking before, New, picking before the Giants, and none of them are going offense, number one. None of them are going quarterback, number two. Um, so a team that wants to jump, jump New York to, to grab one of those guys – I mean, you got to give them, uh, you know, a king's ransom because all these guys are apparently dead set on picking defensive tackles and defensive ends. And but to your point, yeah, there's people in free agency, but you're getting these guys on rookie deals where you get them for five years and you get to pay them peanuts. But you also have to keep in mind that there are teams in the back half of the draft that could possibly move up to get to get your. If, so say there's two, Mel Kiper saying four, right? Four quarterbacks. But say there's really only two. There's there's Kyler Murray and and, and what's his name Hawkins. Has- Haskins. Um, Haskins, yeah. Okay. So if one of them is going to go, I mean, the, if the Giants are really – this is this is the draft that they got to get. They have to. They have to take a quarterback. Have to. Right, because Eli's got one more year on his deal. They're not going to bring him back after next year. No. So you, you got you to gotta go get somebody. So why, why not? Yes. So, why not move up to three? Why not move up to one if, if you're willing to do it? it oh, oh, so – so I, I, told, I, I told this to, to Dan move, last up to, move up to one, you may have to give up like three years of first round picks. Whereas if you move up to three, the be- the benchmark is already there. It's a one and a whole bunch of twos. So, so I, I said I said this to Dan last week. There was a there was a, a thought on one of the radio stations that the Giants trade up to number one, but so they give the the Cardinals their number one pick, but the Cardinals give the Giants Josh Rosen. Yeah, I don't see how that's an even trade. <laughs> I, well, that, you're right. I'm not, they, that, that was just something somebody brought up. Yeah. But it, it, it's interesting. Well, listen, as we get closer, as we get closer, we're going to hear a lot of scenarios. And I'd you be know. I'd be shocked if the Jets did not trade their pick. McCagnan loves to wheel and deal. He's traded almost every single draft of his, and I'd be shocked if they stayed at number three, only because my, I mean, the Giants are not the only team that need a quarterback. Um, and, and if this draft is so is so defense heavy, one of those top defensive players is still going to be there at six. So yeah. they, they'd still be able to get defensive outside help, which is really what they need. And then because the um, uh, Greg Williams plays a four three, not a three four, so they're going to have to change their entire defensive system. So they're going to need another outside pass rusher. So I'm just throwing this out there, but everyone's got Kyler Murray as a quarterback, yet. The knock on him is that he's kind of small. I mean, do you see anybody drafting him to play wide receiver or something else? He'll be a quarterback. He'll he'll be he'll be like um, Tim Tebow was, where he won't he won't budge, especially if he goes in the first round, which is what they're projecting him to go. Um, it, this is not like Julian Edelman, where he was drafted in. You yeah. Know, where, you know. Um, but like, if he's the best player, but you don't want him to play quarterback, is there any? Maybe you draft him and trade him, I guess. You could, okay, I mean, I could see someone do that, like draft him, but if he refuses to switch positions, trade him. Interesting. Just throwing it out there. <laughs> um, I love that little ding. It's like next topic. Uh, ding. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunately I'm using, I'm using a, a, my wife's computer, and that's her text message. <laughs> no, I just, I just think it's funny because it, it was at the perfect time. I was yeah, like, all right, ding, next right, topic. We'll move on. We'll move on. All right. <laughs> So, so Brown's getting traded. Let's, let's talk Ka- Kaepernick for a second just because we got to touch on it because it was a huge story, and then we'll move on because we don't need to dive down the rabbit hole of yell- arguing. But the NFL settled prior to them going to court. So they basically conceded. Uh, Eric Reed got, a, got picked up by a team, and he's under a new contract. No one's going to sign Colin Kaepernick now. But do we think the blacklist has been lifted? Like, do you think he's allowed to be signed? What you, what's your opinion? Okay. I, I have my opinion, obviously, that he was blacklisted by the NFL and they said, don't touch him. And everyone listened. According to – Well, wait, wait. wait. If, if that's the case, then 
then his case against the NFL for collusion would be true. Well, right, and they settled with him, basically saying it was true, in my opinion. That, that was it. my I know, I know. We, yeah. we need to hear what the settlement was, I think, because well, it was never, a huge... Well, so the fact is that they had an arbitration hearing in the fall, and the arbiter decided against the NFL and was saying, go to court. So they settled prior to going to court because they felt like they were going to lose. They wouldn't have settled if they felt like they were going to win. So I don't, I don't know the details of the case, obviously. Yeah, but it's uh, like what, what my main takeaway is: the NFL felt like they were going to lose, and so they settled with him for a lot of money. Yeah, I'm just I'm curious what it was. It, it must be. I mean, that's the only thing you could have settled with is money. Like, what what was he really going after? Was he trying to get back in the league? Was he trying for money? Like, what was he really going for? I think According to his lawyer and agent, there's somebody going to sign him. Somebody's oh, maybe they will now. The blacklist is up. I, I think he wanted to prove that the NFL colluded against him to prevent him from playing football. Simply. Because he took a stance. And, ever, and since then, the NFL has formed a coalition with the players to do exactly what he wanted to do in the first place. It's just kind of like, I don't know. I felt like the NFL's position on this was laughable, regardless of how you feel about what Kaepernick actually did. They actually. I wonder, I wonder, if, it was, I wonder if it was the NFL colluding to tell the owners not to sign him, or all the owners just like, I don't want to deal with this headache, so I'm not going to do it on my own. It, it may look yeah. like collusion, but, I mean, yeah. you know. I mean, the, the owners are the NFL. If every single one of them as an individual decided they didn't want the headache, they unintentionally colluded. Yeah, yeah. It, it's equally as possible. So um, can, I, can I throw something out here? And the, the, yeah. I'm, I, I don't really care what he did or what he, what he didn't do. Could, can anybody just simply state the fact that his last year in the league, he had subpar numbers and he was not very good and he had a bad throwing shoulder? That's what I was stating last week, too. Well, so, so, why, so why, that why was his final year, but he's 31 years old. He's 31 years old. Like quarterback anymore. So, I mean, I have no reason to think he can't play. I mean, lots of players come back from injury. He wanted $20 million to play in that cockamamie. You uh, didn't actually want that. You re-believe everything you read. <laughs> <laughs> the, average, the average player of the AAF makes 75000 a year. He wants I, $20 million. I think every player makes the same salary. I thought that's what I read. Maybe, maybe there's a couple of tiers. But it's, like, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, an, it's an average salary. of. I looked it up because I, I was curious. It's an average salary of 75000 This guy wants $20 million. Come you, on. Know, you know he knew that about the league. I know. I know. <laughs> so, I know. Um, I mean, what I so there's, a, so there's what you said about Kaepernick. What I read is that he has great touchdown interception numbers over his career, and he's only 31. And they freaking brought was it Josh Johnson in last year off the scrap heap who hadn't played in longer than Kaepernick instead of Kaepernick. So it was just like teams are bringing just, contracts in that have no business playing. They brought Mark Sanchez in. They're bringing people in. I know you like Sanchez, but they're bringing people in that have no business being on the field, and. To say, I mean, we don't know what we don't know what Kaepernick can or can't do. He could suck. Well, no one's even tried him out. They haven't even brought him in for a, a test run. It's just kind of silly to me. But uh, but do you think he catches on somewhere? I'm torn because I feel like he has. If he comes back and gets signed by a team, he has to kneel immediately. And we're He's back. We started. Like, why wouldn't he stop? Why would he stop? doing what he already started to do. So I don't think he signs anywhere. But, but for the same reasons that all the owners are like, I don't want the headache, or because he's really not that good? I don't, part of the, I don't think part they want of all the action. Of, uh, part of all of this started when he was uh, – apparently he, he was going to be signed in Baltimore, but then his girlfriend said something, and then they dropped it. So now they now he thinks that everyone everyone's out. Oh yeah, Baltimore offered him a contract. That's right. I just forgot about this. You mentioned it. Baltimore offered him something to, to yeah. come. Yeah, I forgot about that. I mean, he has he has nothing to gain from playing football at this point. He he uninter he unintentionally became the face of this face of a movement that's kind of moved beyond him. But he's still the face of it, even whether he does anything or not. I, I mean, he's in the public spotlight. He keeps making himself relevant so he's going to do something to keep himself relevant i don't know what it will be but i don't he doesn't have a lot to gain from actually playing football anymore you, you can almost argue he has more to gain by not playing football yeah it's yeah it's it, it that it's a story that'll now that it's settled might just finally get put to bed and everyone will just kind of forget about it but that's what i think is going to happen i, I, I would like okay 
it won't get put to bed until somebody signs them. I guarantee you. Well, I would just like to see them join this players coalition to utilize the league money to help fight the problems that exist. Cause that was the point of forming the coalition. Now I know Eric Reed like spoke out against it, which I think is ridiculous. I mean, I think it's a good thing regardless of where the money is coming from. Um, just add them to the coalition and then you've kind of made peace publicly. I think it would be good. I don't know. I don't yeah. need to see him play, but I mean, it, here's, and here's why it won't go away. Just the kind of other people in other leagues are talking about it still. So yeah, you, know, you got, you got LeBron going out and you got him saying stuff about it. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's never, never going to go away because there's always going to be somebody who's going to throw their two cents into it until they see him playing football again. Listen, even if you were to sign a contract with somebody, He's not going to start. He's going to be a. He's just going to be there on the sideline. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, and, tell me, yeah. tell me, tell me a team that if he, if a legitimate team signs him, that has a legitimate I mean, quarterback in place. Everyone's talking about him, him being signed by the Patriots. He's not playing over Tom Brady. No, he's just going to sit there and but, be the he, boy of whatever. I, I I would expect him to win the starting job in Tampa Bay. I would expect him to win it, hell in Denver over Flacco and Keenum. I mean, now I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm basing that on the fact of what type of player he was before his injury. I don't I don't know what type of player we're going to be getting now after several years. But, but you named teams out of 32 NFL teams, so that means 30 teams don't need him. Maybe Miami. Yeah, Miami Miami could. Okay, so th- there you go. Now, now there's three teams, but I mean, there's not. There's oh, that's a lot the of- Time to move along. <laughs> 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 I think that was a good, good, well-timed thing. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife's very popular. Yes, I gotta tell her to, sh- to cut it out. <laughs> no, I think it's fine. No, you have to absolutely have to keep it on. Absolutely. All right. All right. Um. So I mean, but we'll, we'll, I mean, we'll, I guess we'll see where that goes. I don't think he's going to play anywhere next year. That's that's just my opinion. I, I don't think he's going to get signed anywhere. But I mean, but the story, like you said, the story's not going to go away because we can't personally relate to this whole issue of police against a certain group of people, and that shouldn't. All right, I'm going to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we'll, just, we'll ignore it. We'll ignore it. Football. So, did you guys watch any of the AAF this week? I I just read the story that they got. A huge investment, whether or not it was a bailout to save the league or just a new investor coming in. I heard about that today. I got to read up more more on it because um, the owner, the owner of the uh, Carolina Hurricanes, he gave him two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I, I guess there was a quote by um, Ebersol saying that the, the league was not in trouble about going belly up, and that's it wasn't a bailout. So okay, because I'd be interested to hear. I, I I did hear about that today. Yeah. Because I don't know if it's true. Were they actually not going to make salary this week and they needed the money? Or not? I guess it doesn't really matter. They got saved. First of all, there's like 15 people at these games. And not to mention that there's only 15 people at these games. It is awful football. It's, it's, it, is, it is unwatchable football. <laughs> Did you watch I, any of it? I, I, I tried to watch some of it the other night. I fell asleep on the couch. All right, all right. So, so I got to turn it on. I'll turn it on this week just to see how bad it is because I have not – officially tuned in i've just been tracking the league but i, I will i will yeah. say that you and dan and i talked about it last week there was a lot of um a lot of sacks you know the bad offensive lines a lot of low scoring games i i caught a little bit here and there but i did check out some box scores it did seem like there was a lot more scoring this week which obviously everybody likes touchdowns and field goals well, actually yeah, yeah field goals because there's no kickoffs um it, I, I didn't look at the, the ratings yet, which I probably should have beforehand, because the first week was out doing NBA games, you know, out doing NBA on, on Saturday night, doing a better rating than that. Now, was that just the fact that it was week one and everybody was interests were, were there? I, I didn't see the carryover to week two yet. Um, I don't know. It just looked like the scoring was a little higher, which, again, if you're going to watch a game, you want to watch it for scoring. You don't want to watch, like Bud said, bad unwatchable football with, you know, teams that can't block and quarterbacks getting sacked and, you know, I, I didn't watch a lot of week two because the unfortunate thing is it's on, it's on at like two o'clock in the afternoon on, on Saturday, two and four. I mean, listen, it's hard enough to devote to tell my wife I'm watching football all day 
during the NFL season. I usually win that battle. I, yeah. I'm not going to win it in the spring. Yeah, no, my, my wife was equally as happy when the NFL season ended. So um, I don't even try it in the middle of Saturdays. So. Yeah, ask but, ask but how Lori feels about football. <laughs> She's sitting right here. She hates it. I know. That's so, what I'm saying. <laughs> she needs to, what she needs to do is become a Patriots fan so she can root against you and always win, and then she'll feel good about herself. <laughs> So, 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 you, I so hope you heard. I hope you heard what she just said. I did not hear it. Okay, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, so well, your interest, your interest in the AF is is a uh, bare minimum at, at best. Is I watched. Saying. I watched some of this. The uh, San Diego was playing. I don't even know who they were playing. I mean, um, Matt Sims was the quarterback against. Um, I don't even know who the was. Other it Hackenberg? Was. How did no. Sims? But I will say this: Christian Hackenberg is awful. <laughs> <laughs> he is awful. Oh. We, I, I texted you that that was part of one of the games that I watched, and I texted both of you like on his first on his first drop back, he got he got a fumble, and then on his second drop back, he got an interception. <laughs> I mean, oh. you're, these guys are these guys aren't even good enough to play for Alabama. But Nick Saban recruit these guys so hey that, that's how, how, did, how did matt sims look he looked okay i mean listen they, they're playing the offensive lines are terrible there's no running game the offensive systems yeah. are terrible well i, I really they, think by mike, mike, yeah. they have mike singletary as a, as a coach they got all these high high profile coaches um yeah. come in and i think that's just to try to try to get well, something going i mean if, if we remember what the xfl was back 19 years ago the first three weeks of the XFL, everybody was crazy about it, and then all of a sudden the ratings tanked, and yeah. then it was bad football. Well, I, I'm hope, yeah, I'm hoping with this big investment that that's basically a way of saying we're going to get through the entire season, and maybe even next season because I didn't expect it to be good football until at least three quarters of the way through this season because they haven't they didn't have any practice time, and so like I want to watch the playoffs and see if they're actually competitive and good by the playoffs time. Um, and I just, I mean, I'm rooting for the league, but the fact that, so, so you mentioned that it beat the NBA. I don't know if that's good for the AAF or really bad for the NBA. <laughs> I think, I think it was just cause it was the first, you know, week one Yeah. And, and everyone's interest was, you know, peak because it's, it's the first, first weekend without football. So everyone's like, well, I'm Jones in for it because we just watched the Super Bowl. Um, yeah. Jones in for it. Is that what you said? I'm Jones in for it. Yeah. What? Well, you never heard that term before? And we're moving on. <laughs> That's something that like, they used in World War II. Yeah, well, listen, I'm a historian. I'm a historian of the game. All right, so, so we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll touch back on this maybe historic moment in NFL history when the AAF started up <laughs> or not. Um, there are some good players. I mean, there are, there are, you know, my guess is that they want to use this as like a stepping stone to the NFL, right? So like an in-between league, yeah. kind of like the minor leagues of, of the other. Yeah. Well, well, that's exactly, that's exactly what Bill Polian said last week. He's like, that's our goal five or 10 years down the road is to be that. If you want to call it developmental minor league system for, for the NFL. Like I, I was telling Dan last week, the fourth game of the weekend was on NFL network. So they already have a hand in the NFL already has a hand in this. And, and, right. and they want it to be a decision. Do you get drafted in the seventh round and go to the practice squad, or do you go play in the AAF? I don't know the monetary difference between the AAF salary and the seventh round salary, but I got to believe they'll eventually be on the par. So that's a real decision for people. And, that's and, and I said, and, and I mentioned you guys this week, I said, is it possible that the NFL draft, you can draft AAF guys or, and or college guys? I, yeah. It's possible, right? Maybe. I don't, I don't think they will do that only because it, it changes the dynamic of what the AAF is. You know, it's not a minor league system if you can draft from it. Yeah, but uh, there's not 32 of them. So not, it's well, not like a team right. has one. I thought that they already assigned, like, NFL teams to AAF teams. I could be mistaken. What, when does the season end? Does it end before the draft? I mm -hmm. think it's 10 weeks, I think. Uh, I think it's – it's in that same time frame. I don't know if it's – it's probably right around the draft if they're smart. Well, there's, no, there's only eight teams in the league, so I don't know how many times they each play each other. We'll have to, we'll have to look that up. It's, well, if it's ten weeks, then it's going to be around that time frame. Yeah. 
My well, guess is that it probably ends before the because the NFL draft now is in like almost May, right? Is it in May? It was always in the middle. It yeah. changed. It used to be. It used to be at the end of April. I think it got pushed back now. But whatever. We'll, we'll have to. We'll have to look that up. Okay. The um, it'd be curious to see what you said though, Phil. I mean, if if you're able to draft them, because if the season does go past the draft, I mean, then they're not drafted. Well, then yeah, then it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Then it make sense because then what you'd have to do is each team would have to sign some sort of players as unrestricted uh, free agents, uh, you know. If you can get drafted out of the AAF, though, you're going to see college guys hop right out of their season into the AAF season into the NFL draft because it'd be sandwiched between them. That'd can you really – I thought about this. Can you really play all uh, uh, football all year? Let, let's say these guys play huh. eight or ten weeks at AAF. Then no. you, let, Let's just say they get signed as free agents. That's probably what will happen. Then they get signed on the NFL squads. Granted, they won't be starters because that's that's just that's not going to happen. Uh, but it's possible that they play eight or ten games in the spring. Then let's say they'll have a whole bunch of injuries happen in the fall, and these guys are playing sixteen games in the NFL. That, that's a lot of football. The only thing I'll say to that is, you kind of need to keep your body in football shape year round, anyways, to a point. So it depends on how much they're playing in these games. Like, I can't imagine like when we played football, we absolutely needed the off season. <laughs> and we were as, we were at our peak physical condition. Yeah, we were oh, peak, so, peak all right. Um, so I don't I don't know how you could possibly play year round unless you're just but but if we only practiced and then we just stood on the sidelines, I probably could play year round. Yeah, it, it'll it'll be interesting to see what what ends up happening with with these guys after the season. The the draft was just an idea, but they'll probably end up being like you know unrestricted free agents and stuff like that, and each team can bid for them. It's that's probably the way it's going to happen, but. I, you know, I don't know the answer to that yet. All right, so we got a couple of minutes left. What are you guys looking out for here between over the next two weeks? I guess because we got a couple, like about two weeks till the league year kicks off. Maybe it's three, but you, you looking for a trade to go down? You looking for any? I'm looking to see what the Jets are going to do as far as you know defense and if they're going to make any trades, if they're going to move uh, in the draft. I mean, that's pretty much all I'm looking. Yeah, I, I think the only story we're going to hear between now and, and the beginning of the year is where Antonio Brown's going to go. Everything, everyone else is going to be pretty quiet. You know, you're going to hear mock draft stuff all over the place. And There's a few players that have performance escalators, signing bonuses kicking in that, that league year. Eli Manning's one of them. I think he gets a big bonus or something when the new year league year starts. So I was seeing articles like, will the Giants keep him or will they? So, I mean, I could see a restructure. I don't think they'll dump him. By any means. I don't think you can because I have to look into this more. But if they cut him, it's probably going to go against the cap. So what what's the point of cutting him? You're going to pay him anyway. I think it's like if they can save ten million out of his twenty or something. Yeah, I, maybe. maybe. I want to. Um, there's a few guys like that that are in that situation. I I actually think we might see another couple quarterbacks on the move. I feel like Tannehill's up for trade because he would do well in a new scenario, but nobody seems to want him in Miami anymore. Which, well, all right, so where does Nick Foles go? Miami. Yeah, I think that's – he could go to the Dolphins easy. Um, and uh, and they, would give, they would give up enough for him. I mean, the Eagles have already picked up his option, so he's already going to get $20 million. Right. Um, so the Eagles are going to have to move him. And that's just so he didn't walk away. So now, now the Eagles can move him and trade him. Um, you know, I mean, it's a, it was a smart business move by them. By them. Yeah. Yeah. The the only the only th- other thing that's going to come up between now and beginning of March and the beginning of the league new year is uh, franchise tag season. So that'll be interesting to see who does and who doesn't get tagged. I'm almost certain, and I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. That land, they're going to franchise Landon Collins. They almost have to. Yeah. He plays, he plays you know, defensive back for the Giants. He, I mean, he's one of the best, one one of the best backs in the league. So. He's getting franchise tag, no, no doubt, no question in my mind. I don't think the Jets have anybody to tag. <laughs> I don't know if that's a fair <laughs> bad thing. So. <laughs> tag the punk. I, I, yeah, I think the Giants only have Landon Collins. He's the only one I think that they're gonna that, that they're gonna franchise tag. Le'Veon Bell might get tagged again too, and that's gonna be interesting to see how that. But it, I know you shake your head, but it, it that story's be, not over yet. It would be a transitional tag, right? So I mean, it, all that means is that he still can't play for Pittsburgh because. He's already been franchise tagged too many times. It, all it means is that they would have to trade him, right? Instead yeah. of him walking. Yeah, away. It, it prevents him from being an unrestricted free agent, basically. Right. Hmm. Which yeah. is just, a, I mean, just Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh seems like they're going to F a lot of people's stuff up this offseason. <laughs> Uh, they they wouldn't be – I mean, if they're breaking down the team, can they pay Nick Foles less than they can pay Ben Roethlisberger? Because I know Ben won them Super Bowls, but what are you doing with him on the roster with nobody else? I mean, they, I guess they maybe they believe in Schuster and stuff. I, I And Connor. But, you got, you got um, Connor and you got Juju, and I yeah. think that they could easily fill in for the other two. And yeah. I think it'd be fine. Bulls will be interesting. I'm, I'm, there's a few players I hope don't get franchised because I want the Jets to be able to get them, but I'm not crossing my fingers. So. Well, so so you mentioned Demarcus Lawrence last week, and I, yeah. as I was reading that article, he was the number one name on the list. So don't 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 hold your breath on that one. I'm not. He's yeah, not I'm, going anywhere. I want him to, but I'm not holding my breath. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, other than other than uh, Dan's got to watch some AAF this week to to uh, be able to join the conversation. There's unfortunately it's we're at the period of the league year where it's just. It's pretty dead. I mean, the Antonio Brown stuff is news, but other than that, there's not a lot going on, and not until the beginning of March, and that's that's when it starts up all over again. Side note, yeah. What do you, uh, what do both of you think of Manny Machado getting three hundred million dollars? Not surprised. It was it was going to happen. I'm happy he got his money because it proves that the MLB is not dead. I I couldn't believe that like it was just like. They weren't going to pay these guys. They kind of have to. They're the stars of the league. So yeah. So so what do you what do you think is going to happen with uh, Harper then? Oh, I, he'll he'll get his money. Uh, I don't he's know. Gonna, if he's going to want, gonna want more than Machado. Thanks for watching, Buzz Talk. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Subscribe and share. Woo.